the final chapter on the Sherlock Southern Railway. Brought to you by AFLK Productions. It was our goal in this chase to shoot every crossing the CHS has, as this would be the last opportunity to document this small snort line in action. The Sherlock Southern started off as a connection from the CN in town to the grain elevator outside of town on M50, but due to lack of carloads, CN decided to not serve the elevator and sold the branch off to the CHS. The grain elevator decided to use this connection for the first several years of the agreement. After a few years, they decided to part ways with the railroad and start shipping by truck. At that time, CHS decided it was a smart idea to get into the dinner train business to save the railroad. The idea panned out as planned and gave a new form of income to keep the rails open as rail car storage became another staple income to provide profit to the railroad. Around 2016, the railroad ended its agreement with the leasing firms and ended the car storage but kept the line open for dinner train traffic but stopped maintenance past the I-69 tunnel. The dinner train remained operational until early 2020 when the coronavirus took over and caused the CHS to shut down the dinner train which has never reopened. Under new ownership, the Adrian and Blissfield had decided to part ways with the line and sell all the dinner train equipment left on site. CHS No. 3 is a GE 44 tonner built for the Danesville and Mount Morris Railroad in October of 1956 and is the last 44 tonner built by General Electric. This unit has spent the remainder of her life as the sole power for all the CHS operations on the ex Michigan Southern Main through Sherlock. Due to the lack of traffic, dirt and debris has built up in the crossing and required cleaning to prevent derailment.
From above, we pace the number 3 along M50 over trackage that hasn't seen service in the past 10 years. The CPMY crews spent days leading up to this event clearing away brush and down trees from the railroad right away to allow access to the store cars at the end of the line. Ahead, the number 3 would stop due to a downed tree that had fallen in recent hours blocking the main. The crew took great caution throughout the event to limit the possibility of a derailment which could have put a halt to the operation. Here we see the conductor and engineer on the ground cutting away the fallen tree to allow room for the number 3 to pass. Back on the move, the number 3 would take the super elevated curb as they bank into the M50 grade crossing. As the number 3 becomes visible from the M50 grade crossing, it's easy to see just how overgrown the right of way has gone at this spot. This would be the first train that has crossed the M50 grade crossing in the past 15 years. Let's watch as this historic moment progresses. M50 is the last crossing on the line as the rail has been cut before where the Flounders Road crossing once was. Now in the woods we see what the operation is out here to get, but first the crew along with the employees on the ground would have to move the silver Long Island car out of the way to retrieve the GTW RPO car. Now you might ask, why are these cars even here to start off with? Well that answer is complicated. When the CHS decided to start up the dinner train in Charlotte, they purchased and brought both the Long Island car and the RPR car to Charlotte and had plans to expand their dinner train operations from one car dining setting 
to two or three cars and allow more gas which would generate more money for the railroad. These cars sat until some time before COVID when the Adrian and Blissfield started to restore these cars but ended up being cut off by COVID. Due to the dinner train never being revived, the cars have never been given any more interest and have rotted away in the woods ever since. This is the first time this car has moved since it was placed here sometime around 2013. So another question you might have is, why are they only retrieving the RPO car and not the Long Island car? This one is a bit more easy. The Coopersville and Marn Railway is the railroad that is purchasing most of the equipment that the CHS used to run their dinner train. The deal that they made with Adrian and Blissfield was that they would buy both the kitchen car and the dining car, but in return they wanted the RPO car to be a donation to the railroad. The Adrian and Blissfield decided to grant this deal with the lines that the CPMY would do all the work of retrieving the car, which included the clearing of brush, fixing of the car, hiring a private engineer, and driving out there to get it in itself. The Adrian and Blissville did allow the CPNY to use their number three, but CPNY did have to put new batteries in it to make the engine move. Luckily for all parties involved, there is still a runaround track at the end of the line that CN installed to allow easy access for switching of the CPS elevator around the bend. This runaround made it so the crew only had to push the car out of the way to have the ability to get at the RPO car they were out there to retrieve. From above, it's hard to tell just how much brush is really on the ground here, but it took almost a half an hour of clearing and multiple shoves up the spur to get the Long Island car out of the way and allow room for the number three to pass back through. Now set aside, the number three would shoot back and tie on to the RPO car. At this time, we would retreat back to the M50 grade crossing and set up for the return trip. As the number three pulled up and stopped, the CF&E elevator employees would flock outside to watch the final train pass their elevator. Told you it'd be an event. I guess so.
The CFE elevator in recent years installed a gate that did not allow enough clearance for the large RPO car to pass by. With that, the RPO car grabbed the gate and dragged it across the crossing along, pulling the wire fence that was hatched with it. The white Impala is the car our crew used for this chase. My car didn't suffer any damages due to the wire slipping underneath my wheels. Coming under Interstate 69, we zoom in on the straightaway as the number 3 and ancient RPO car wobble as they approach Henry Street. The RPO car you see has lots of history behind it by itself. It started off as life on the Grand Trunk Western as a mail car and served the GT for several years before it being retired and turned into a firefighting car by CN. This is where it received its red lead paint that has faded away to the point you see here. Sometime in the 2010s, the car was purchased by the CHS and has remained in the woods ever since. This car has a builder date of 1924. As the number three rounds a curve off of Johnson Street, school is in session at Gilward Early Elementary and the kids are out for recess. Engineer Eric gave the kids a show as they chased him along the fence.
Now back at the runaround Nexus Sparrow, the number 3 would stash the RPO car away behind a generator car left in the hole. The generator car is said to have been part of a circus train before finding its way to the CHS. After stashing the car, the number 3 would pull forward back onto the main and run back to the other end of the runaround and tie onto the now two car consist. The crew opted to do this rather than having to perform the extra switch work required to shove just the RPO car down. Now tied onto the opposite end of the consist, the number 3 would start to shove towards the CN interchange. The first grade crossing it would cross would be Oliver Street. At M50, the number 3 would hold for a few minutes, allowing for a meet between C and train E251 and the CHS consist. With the crossing now protected, the RPO car would lead the way past the Michigan Central Station built in 1902, which is now a Mexican restaurant.
The number three would block traffic at M50 for close to a half an hour due to brake problems on the other two coaches already at the interchange. Once the setoff was complete, the number three would pull back by the station as it approached Washington Street. Engineer Eric was nice enough to give us a complete crossing sequence as this unit crossed one of our last crossings. What's to come of the CHS is unsure. The number three is expected to be sold and trucked out. The generator car has not yet met a fate. The Long Island car at the end of the line is set for scrap and the line in itself is yet to be determined, but there is talks of a rail trail in place. I hope you enjoyed this video as we documented the Sherlock Southern's last run on the AFLK Productions YouTube channel. As always, I'm Logan and I'll see you trackside.